op amps and Arduino, controlling analog from digital. So here's what we have going on essentially. I'm using the Arduino Uno and I'm going to be reading in an op amp here and plotting out on the serial plotter in the Arduino environment. The idea is I'm taking a signal generator sine wave, I'm sending it into the op amp, and the op amp will have a gain, and then the final analog input, everything is 5 volts, so it's all safe levels. I'm, I'm giving a signal that's about 700 millivolts, so I can scale it up and get a lot of gain and still be within 5 volts. The op amp is running on 5 volts, so it's safe to drive this analog in, and everything's powered from the Arduino's 5 volts. So I give this sine wave a gain, whether I increase it or reduce it, and I read the analog in, and I just basically send it straight out to the serial plotter, and I can see the sine wave. At the same time, I'm taking a copy of the original sine wave input, also going into an analog input and plotting that so I can see the original and the signal with gain from the op amp. I have a digital X9C family 100K potentiometer in the feedback loop, so I've got some control signals from the Arduino to allow me to change the resistance, and I'm doing that via a couple of push buttons so I can change the wiper up and down. The gain on an inverting configuration op amp like this is minus total feedback resistance divided by this input resistance. So when my 100k pot is at 0 ohms, I still have a fixed 4.7k in series, so my minimum resistance in the feedback is 4.7. Let's round it to 5 just to make the math easy, and the input resistance is a fixed 10. So when the pot is at minimum, say we got 5k, divided by 10k is a gain of minus about 0.5. If I put the pot about halfway, which is 50k, I really have about 55k. So 55k divided by the 10k gives me a gain of about minus 5.5. If I put the resistance fully at 100k, I have about 105k. So with the pot at 100, the gain is minus 10.5 times. Having this fixed resistor in series with the 100k pot guarantees that I will always have some kind of resistance in the feedback loop of the op amp when I put the pot all the way down to zero. I don't want a short circuit here. The other purpose of having a 4.7k resistor here, the data sheet for this digital pot says the wiper current shouldn't be more than 4.4 milliamps, so the worst case current is going to be when this wiper is shorted all the way to this high side. And then the only resistance to limit the current is this 4.7k. And let's just say we had 0 volts here and 5 volts here. That's the most difference we're going to ever get, and we're never even going to get that. Well then we still have about only worst case 1 milliamp going through this 4.7k and shorting through the wiper. A refresher on this X9C family of digital pots, I have the 100k resistance version, even though mine's labeled as 103 from eBay, it measures as a 104. So I'm using a 100k digital pot. It has a VCC of 5 volts operating, so that's convenient for the Arduino. Three controls are the up-down direction, the increment for going up or down, and then the chip select, and then you have your high and low and wiper resistor terminals. The op amp I have on hand is a TLC272, so I'm running it at 5 volts as well. So this way, keeping everything at 5 volts is not only convenient to power it from the Arduino, but with the digital pot being 5 volts, it's just easier this way. This op amp doesn't really go to the rail, so when I'm giving it 5 volts, my output high voltage at room temperature can be between 3.2 and 3.8 typical, but they don't give a max, so it could even be higher. And I've seen about this kind of level. So I'm only using this just to get a feel for using this digital pot in the feedback loop of an op amp. All I want to do is see that I can get gain above and below 1 with a test input. I'm using the function generator to get a 700 millihertz sine wave because it shows up nice in the serial plotter. 
and because I'm going to be amplifying it with an op amp, it's 450 millivolts peak to peak and sitting on top of the function generator. Over here I have my sine wave coming in. It's just where it was convenient. I taped down the probe. So it comes over this way and makes its way to the op amp circuit. It's kind of hard to show all this, especially on two separate things. I don't want wires to fall out. Here's the digital pot. Here's the op amp circuit. So over on the Arduino, I have two analog inputs. I'm also giving five volts to the breadboard. Everything's running on five volts. Analog zero is the output of the op amp. Analog one is an optional that I have connected debug analog input. It's the input of the op amp coming straight out of the function generator. So I want to see my original signal and my scaled signal from the op amp with the gain. The digital pot is connected up in the feedback loop of the op amp as well as its control lines are over here so the Arduino can set the pot. Also I have push buttons over here so I can tell the Arduino when I want to change the pot wiper up and down to change the gain of the op amp. I have the serial plotter running and the red trace is my raw input from the function generator and the blue trace is coming out of the op amp. So the gain here is set to approximately negative 0.5 which means the blue trace is half the size of the red input and it's also inverted because it's negative gain. So over in the sketch this is a modified version of my original X9C digital pot sketch. We have our pot control pins for up, down, increment, and chip select. We have push buttons for turning the pot up or down by five increments, or five percent because there's a hundred positions available. And I'm using a 100k pot, so this actually changes it up or down by 5k at a time. Then I have debug in, and that's just my raw red signal coming straight out of the function generator. So this one's always going to be the same, and the blue one is going to go bigger and smaller. Then there's debouncing on here. It's the same settings I had in the original pot control sketch. So all I'm doing is debouncing those push buttons I have. In the setup part, I initialize the serial monitor and the pot, and I set the pot down to its minimum resistance value so my gain is going to be the minimum and the way I have my resistors that gives me this setup here with about 0.5 times gain. I didn't want to have this start up and stay arbitrarily somewhere that's too high of a gain and then I max out and saturate the op amp output so I set it up for minimum gain to start and then I can use the push buttons to increase it. So in the main loop I check if a button has been pressed, and if so, I will go and set the pot up or down by 5k. And all I do is I print out on the serial monitor the two analog inputs. So I'm reading them as I'm printing them, and that's it for the loop. Check if a button's been pushed if I want to change the resistance, do so if required, and then just read the analog port again. So I'm creating a real-time pseudo real-time oscilloscope here. So this being the default on boot with say a 0k nominal potentiometer resistance therefore I've only got a 4.7k in the feedback loop and I have a 10k as an input resistor the gain is minus feedback resistance divided by the input resistance so minus 4.7 over 10k which equals about minus 0.5 times gain. That's what we have. Close enough. And the digital pot has a wide tolerance on it as well. So I'm not measuring the resistance of the pot. I'm just keeping it in circuit. And it's only just to show that we can change the gain digitally. So we have one, two, and then about a half and about a half. So we have about three divisions vertically on the red trace, which is our raw input. And we're looking for about half times gain on the blues. It goes about three quarters up on this vertical scale and it goes about three quarters down on this vertical scale so it's about one and a half divisions half of the three divisions so we do have about 0.5 gain so now if I want to get one times gain so the input should match the output of course being inverted though we need 
10k resistance in the feedback loop and then 10k feedback resistance divided by the fixed 10k input resistance gives a gain of minus 1. So if I have the pot set to 0 and I have 4.7k, I need to increment the pot with one button press to go up by 5k and my total should be about 9.7k in the feedback and the gain should be close to 1. So I'll push the button once to go up and now this is partly where my offsetting I was trying to get the DC offset right and of course the gain is not exact we said we counted on the red input trace about three divisions vertically so if we try and look at the blue we have in the center we have one division two divisions and then about a half and then more than a half it's more like three and a quarter divisions when we're targeting about three so our gain is a little bit more than one at minus one it looks like and the pot tolerance could be explaining that but again we're just trying to roughly show that we can do this if we wanted to set the gain precisely maybe we need a different approach this is relatively okay so if i want to change the gain to two times so i can try to make the blue output trace twice the size of the red input the gain of minus 2, I would need a 20k resistance in the feedback loop because 20 divided by the 10k input is 2 and then the gain is minus 2. So currently with a gain of minus 1, I have 10k in the feedback. So I need another 10k. I have to press the 5k increment button twice to get 20k in the feedback. 1, 2. Now the blue trace should be about double the red and it's now auto scaled. So this red trace, it's about one and a quarter divisions in. We're looking for about two and a half divisions on the output blue for a two times gain. So starting at the bottom, we have one division, two divisions, and about a half compared to it looks like about one and a quarter red input. Okay, so if we want to try and get four times gain, we need 40k feedback resistance. One, two, three, four. Now we should have about 40k in the feedback and a gain of minus 4. So we have, it's scaled and it's harder to see. It looks like we're in the ballpark of 4 times gain. So let me just try pressing the pot up button to get more gain and see what we can get. So if I have 40k, let me try to get 80k. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80k. So 80k, you can see we're clipping on the top because the output of the op amp can't go fully to the rail. That should be about eight times gain. So it's getting harder to estimate um, the gain just visually. But if we look at this red trace, the bottom of it is not perfectly landing on one of these divisions. But if you try to imagine shifting it up by about the right amount, it's not quite half a division. We're starting to get very unscientific, but let's say I cheated a bit here. Let's say it's 0.43 times a division. It's just under half. It's 0.43 divisions. 0.43 divisions or so times 8 gain is about 3.44. Let's call it almost 3.5 divisions is what the blue should be. We've got between three and a quarter to three and a half divisions, I think, on this blue output trace. And that lines up with eight times this red input trace. So, you know, we're just trying to ballpark it and show what's possible. So this project has some potential, and I think I already have a few ideas I can go with moving forward. If I have any luck with that, I'll be back.